What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to share a little quick tip on how you can get your Blender particle systems to follow along a curve in a fairly organic and simple way. In this specific tutorial, we'll be using our Spiderfy Boyd Systems add-on for adding our particle systems, but you can apply this technique to pretty much any particle system that you've added to your scene, with the exception of the keyed particle physics. Without further ado, let's get started here. I'll go ahead and delete everything in our scene to get started. And now I'll just add a very basic Boyd particle system with our Spiderfy add-on. So we have a variety of different systems that we can add here. I'm going to use one of our flying systems because that will probably give us the best example for this uh, effect. And I'll just use our dragonflies for the sake of this tutorial. And we'll name our dragonfly system here, call it uh, swarm. And then we'll leave the bugs amount at 200. We will add a goal for them to follow and then I'll click on add bug system and now as you can see here we have a dragonfly bug void system as well as a goal object for them to follow so this is how you can control the general movement of your void particle system with this goal here obviously there's a lot you can do with this you can adjust the particle settings as well as the void brain in here as well in case you want different priorities for the way the system acts so this default system works pretty good for most cases but let's say we want these dragonfly particles to go along a curve as they're reaching their final destination. So what I'll do, I'll select our dragonfly system here where they're actually being emitted from, put this over to the bottom left of our frame here, and then I'll just drag our goal object for the dragonflies over here. And I might just increase the size of our emitter as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create that curve for them to generally follow as they go toward our goal object here. So I'll press shift A, I'll add a curve, Bezier curve, and that's going to come in the center of our scene here. And I'll just scale this up quite a bit and then I'll rotate it, press R, Z, rotate it 90 degrees, and I'll just drag it up here and rotate it along the X axis. So it's kind of going toward our goal empty here. And now I'll select our curves here and we'll rename it, we'll call it curve path. And I'm just going to go into edit mode really quick. And now we can sort of adjust how our curve looks. So I'm gonna give it kind of an interesting shape here. So we have something a little bit more interesting for our bug system to follow. So I'll maybe scale this down a little bit and extrude it a few times to just create a little bit more of an interesting shape. Then I'll like just extrude it here. And we can also maybe rotate a bit, give it some movement on the X axis as well. Something like this. All right, so feel free to play around with the curves path here. Obviously, once we set this up, we can adjust it again. So now that we've set up a basic curve here, let's create a force field based on its shape so that the particles can sort of be attracted to it in an interesting way as they make their way toward the goal object here. So I'll go ahead and while our curve is selected, I'll go to our physics properties tab and then I'll add a force field for this curve. And now what we want to do is we want to switch the shape type to curve. So now our force is going to be along our curve here. Now, if we increase the strength of this force field right now, it's actually going to create a force going away from our curve. So it's actually going to push our Boyd particle system away from the curve itself. So you can see it's uh, kind of going down here before it reaches our goal object here. And as we increase this, you'll see it's just actually pushing our particle system away from this curve here. So instead of having this at positive, we actually want this being a negative number. So I might make this a negative, uh, we'll go ahead and try something like negative 20 at first. You can obviously play around with these values depending on your system. And so now this is working a little bit better. You can see our particles are actually going up with the curve here before going to meet our goal object and still moving fairly organically. And we can still kind of move around our goal object and the force field is affecting how our dragonflies are interacting in our scene here. It's not quite there yet. We do want them to closely follow our curve a little bit more here. So let's uh, adjust a few more settings. One thing we might want to adjust is our flow variable here. So by increasing this number, our dragonfly particles are going to stay a little bit closer to our curve here. So maybe try something like one at first so it's not too much of a change. And now you can see when we increase that flow number, our particles are trying to follow our curve a little bit more closely here. They're also going a little bit slower here. So you kind of have to adjust both of these numbers consecutively as uh, we try to get the effect that we want. So I might just increase the strength a little bit higher here to negative 30 and try this out again. And here our dragonflies are following our force field a little bit better here. Might increase this a little bit more even, negative 40 perhaps, maybe negative 45. And let's give this a shot. 
And now we're getting a pretty nice effect here where our locusts are actually following our curve in a fairly organic looking way. So at this point, we can actually animate our goal object to get an even you know, more organic or stylized result, uh, depending on what we're going for. So you can see that if we um, drag our void goal down here to where the particles are being emitted, it can sort of affect how these particles are going along this curve here, and sort of in a sense, animate them and kind of pull them along this curve rather than just having this goal object in one specific area. So if we want to actually animate the goal object and then bake this particle system, what we can actually do is we can select our goal object and we can click on the auto key function and then we can actually press the space bar, grab our goal and we can actually animate this over the course of our timeline and get something that's kind of interesting here. And now you can see that our goal is actually animated by hand and we actually have these keyframes down here at the base of our timeline. So this is just one way you can have a little bit more control over how your particles are moving in the scene, creating a very simple force field along a curve that attracts the particles organically toward it. And then you can also, of course, adjust your void particle settings as well. Maybe uh, increase the max airspeed, for example. If you want a really fast looking result, we can you know, crank this up to maybe 80, increase the air acceleration a little bit, and we'll get an even, you know, a little bit more of a different result here flowing a little bit faster and have some fun with how these particles are moving around. If we go into rendered view, we can see our dragonflies. We're rendering in cycles right now. And this is one kind of effect that we can add, you know, very simply to pretty much any live action or 3D scene. And to bake this out so you don't have to play from the beginning every time, we can just go to our particle settings here with our void system selected, go under cache. And first I'll actually save our project here. So go ahead and save your project and then we'll bake our dynamics here and now we can see how our particles are looking at any point of the timeline so anyways guys that is it for this video i hope it was helpful as always feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel and i'll see you next time